one of the key business processes that we saw significantly impacted by the pandemic was supply chain. And for those companies that were digitized, it certainly digital meant survival in many instances because it allowed them to be agile and to uh, be speedy in terms of redressing their value chains. Um, and I think the pandemic has also, as you pointed out, given us the opportunity to be intentional about our procurement spend. And that's what this initiative is all about. I do agree that there are a ton of conversations happening behind the scenes on ensuring that the supply chain is more diverse. But I do want to double down on the trade issue because we are counting down to the US election. And there is a feeling that if there is a change in the White House, there might be a less confrontational approach to trade. Where does that leave the conversations that many corporates are having on reconfiguring supply chains? Is there a hi hiatus or is there a, a genuine move now to ensure that you have goods and services in the jurisdiction that you're operating just in case? I think there is a degree of flexibility in terms of the uh, approach of companies. You know, it's been interesting. I have the privilege in my role to talk to senior leaders right across the world. And it's been an interesting phenomenon to see how often supply chain has actually, you know, been that topic of conversation. And so people are looking at many different tactics and techniques underpinned by technology to help them ensure that they have continuity of supply. Um, Adair, good morning to you. I just wanted to weigh in on, on, on your visibility at the moment. I think this is, this is so intriguing for investors uh, as we get all these big issues of uh, stimulus and uh, President Trump's health and so on and so forth. We're going to refocus in the fourth quarter, I think, on earnings and just be interested to hear from you what you feel visibility is like at the moment for you as a business. Well, I think we're very fortunate um, to have a series of products and across a geographical spread that creates an incredible sense of relevancy for us in terms of the solutions um, that we operate and offer to our customer base. Um, we're very focused on ensuring customer continuity and customer care during this period of time. Um, and of course, um, I think that it is important that we continue to support our customers to be agile, regardless of what the business environment will throw out of us. I think all of us are navigating a certain sense of uncertainty at this period of time. And what's your sense on um, the potential still for cloud revenue to grow from here? Um, obviously, the, the uh, coronavirus experience has given new impetus to the idea that more companies are migrating to cloud. But ahead of the March beginning of um, the, the virus experience, it almost felt like um, cloud revenue growth was slowing or just moderating. Yes, I mean, we've certainly seen the migration to the cloud as a very significant theme for many of our customers. Um, and we've also seen that reflected, you know, in our own revenue profile. You know, in the first half of this year, 73% of the revenue of SAP became a revenue that is recurring revenue. Um, and also, you know, during the first six months of the year, 17,000 customers across the world went live on various different cloud solutions offered by SAP. So we can certainly see the uptake of solutions that are applicable, that actually help you manage topics like supply, ch supply chain, like employee engagement, like dealing with your customers and doing that and consuming that software in a cloud way.